Hi, I'm Peter Birch and welcome to today's adventure. We're here in this beautiful rainforest. You're gonna be looking for something creepy and crawly, something that's gonna make my skin crawl. If you're new to my channel, make sure you hit that like button and the subscribe button for everyone else. Join the adventure with me, come on, let's go. So one of the coolest parts about living here on the Central Coast is this magnificent environment. It is absolutely drop dead gorgeous, but unfortunately there are a lot of problematic plants. I mean, we have these vines here, heavily spiked. We give them the local terminology here of a lawyer vine because they like to grab hold of you and hang on to you. Now it is starting to rain. This is the perfect habitat we need to be in guys because this beautiful leaf litter, the dirt, and more importantly, check out these rocks. I mean, I, I know I talk about rocks and plants, but I mean, check out the moss and the lichen there. So that lichen looks like it's dead, dried up. It's actually living and thriving. But we need to get a little bit deeper in here, guys. And the cameraman's getting snaggled up on all these nasty looking vines right here. I did a bit of a search earlier on, and I think this may be the contender we're looking for. And what leads me here to this rock in particular is this thing here. It's down the bottom here, but there's a web. That's right, you know what a web means, guys? It means one of my eight-legged fears maybe hiding under or sheltering under this rock right here. We're looking for the Sydney funnel web spider. Now the Sydney funnel web spider lives only in this small isolated area. It's about a hundred kilometers radius from the center of Sydney. So basically as far north as the central coast, which is where we are, it'll go as far west as the Great Dividing Range, the Blue Mountains, and it goes as far south as the Illawarra, down towards Wollongong. Now, in that area, we have all these nice, dense forests and bushland like this, but the most important thing is the deep leaf litter and the dirt and making sure it's nice and moist. What they do is they build a web either under a rock or fallen logs. Now, they like that really high moisture because if it becomes too dry or too warm, these guys will actually die. So, like I said before, there's a web sticking out. So what they do is they basically build a web. And the reason why they call it a funnel web is because back here somewhere, there'll be a, a little indentation with a spider will be within the web. The web will come out and it comes out to the edge of the rock or the, the fallen log and it spreads out in a funnel-like thing. And then what the spider actually does, it feels the web. So when something walks past and walks on top of that web, how does the spider catch it? It doesn't get caught up in the web as such, but those are just basically like little nerve systems they come out. So when something walks on that, the spider will come up, sit at the burrow entrance there and prepares, and then it will race off in that direction and strike down on the food item, giving a deadly blow. Now the cool thing, let's, let's see if I can lift the rock, number one, see if I've eaten my wee bix. Yes, all right, and look at that. That's what we're looking for right there, guys. I mean, they're a smallish sized spider between one to five centimeters. And I mean, nothing about that looks pretty cool, right? It's dark, it's black, it's glossy, it's shiny. It looks like it's not happy at all. Now, I did bring some tweezers because I ain't brave enough to touch these guys. And you can see why. They have this very distinct stance, basically saying, if you keep poking me, you're in for some big trouble. Now, the fangs are right there at the front. This is a female because it's got a very large abdomen right there, a very round, robust abdomen. Now the males are actually 10 times more deadly or toxic than the females. So the males are the ones that actually cause human fatalities. Prior to anti-venom, just about everyone that got struck down by a, a large male funnel web spider, you would have between 28 minutes to two hours, sometimes up to three days of pain and agony. Now, what does that mean for anyone that gets bitten? You start getting droopy eyes, you start drooling, you start salivating, you start, you know, all sorts of horrible things. Your mouth goes tingly, your throat goes tingly. Basically, you're going into a bit of a shock here. Now, the spider's venom doesn't affect all animals. That's the crazy thing right there. It only affects homo sapiens. Isn't that absolutely insane. Now unfortunately humans are homo sapiens so we're one of the very few animals that actually it affects. She's a little bit camera shy but you can see they can actually burrow a little bit so they're not crazy burrowers like you'd think like a rabbit but these guys are burrowing. I mean they live in this moist humid burrows beneath logs and rocks like I said before. They're one of the most venomous species of spiders not only here in Australia but in the world that's right in such a small isolated population it's hard to believe that you can find them here. One of the cool aspects about the funnel web spider is that they don't actually jump these guys actually crawl. And as you can see, they can crawl kind of quickly. Now, how do humans come into contact with these animals that live in these wet environments? That's because we encroach on their environments. We build houses, we come into their environments, we do gardening, we try and steal their rocks for bush rocks to put in our gardens. And the other thing that we do is we leave shoes out and these guys will actually crawl into your shoes and give you a little bit of a surprise. Like I said before, the male funnel web spiders venom is very toxic. That's because the venom contains a unique component called robust toxin. It severely affects the nervous system of humans and monkeys. Now, how does this spider that lives in this wet, moist environment, look at that, it just rolled the rock by itself. So they're quite
quite powerful little spiders. And I mean, look at it, it's ready to rock. It wants to fight. It's not happy at all. It's standing on its back legs here, rearing up, and it's got to strike down forward. They actually would produce a drop of venom which comes down on the end of the fang, right to the very tip. So when they strike down, the venom is injected directly into the opponent. Now, that makes it very easy for this particular spider to be milked for anti-venom. I mean, look at those fangs, guys, like I said. I'm not trying to hurt the spider here. Um, I, I do have a healthy admiration for the spider and I don't want to hurt it. I mean, they're not my cup of tea, but I can tell you now, I feel a lot more comfortable around this guy than a big hairy huntsman spider that just runs so erratically and crazy. It's like the craziest person, you know, they just run all over the place. So this spider is absolutely amazing. And as you can see, they'll come down here, they inhabit these burrows and stuff like this. They'll have a little web come through. Absolutely amazing spiders. Very similar, I must admit, to some spiders that we caught in Africa. That's right, we actually caught a horned baboon spider. Very similar to these guys. Very similar sort of situation. They lived under rocks, on the ground. They laid a web very similar to the funnel web spider. The difference is it was super dry, super crusty, like super warm. They would build a burrow, like a vertical burrow, which you could use water to flush them out. Very similar in body shape, that hard, robust sort of edge like that. Obviously the baboons had a little horn on the back of it. Um, very old world spider. And I mean, you can see this guy really, really is not happy to see us right now. I mean, that was pretty cool seeing the baboons in Africa, but also seeing the correlation to the Australian funnel web spider with me was absolutely pretty awesome. I don't know about you guys. I think I'm gonna move the spider to the side. I'm gonna flip the rock back over because it's very important we put the environment back how it was and then the spider can go back into its home. I hope you guys enjoyed today's show. I know I was biting my nails the whole time dealing with this and it's very scary for me to face my fears. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure you hit that like button and the subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching Criticam. I love you all.